for IV loops, another type of for loops and one of the most used loops in Roblox. It's one of those things that are essential to Roblox development. Well, if it's that important then it's probably hard to use, right? Well, you're partially right. It's a bit hard to understand at the beginning but once you use it in a few examples you will know how it works in no time. But what even is a for IV loop? Well, it's a loop used when you have a lot of values inside of a table and you want to run the same code on all of the things inside of that table. So like if you had a table with a bunch of different random parts and you want to apply the same property to all of the parts, then you would use a for IV loop. Or for example, if you had a bunch of numbers inside of a table, then you would use a for IV loop to add all of those numbers up or to subtract all of the numbers. And basically, if you want to handle a bunch of different values that are inside of one table, then you would use a for IV loop. So let's see how we type it. But before that, let's make a variable with table value. You can name your variable whatever you want, but I'll name it table value to keep it simple. Now, type for so that Roblox knows that we are starting a for loop. Now type i, v in table value do and press enter and now here you would type in the code that you want to run on every single value that is inside of the table and then just end your for loop with an end you're probably confused by now because of this huge line of code right here but don't worry i'll explain it right now so first for you already know what this is it's just an indicator so roblox knows that you're starting a for loop now the confusing part, i, v in table value. When I was learning for loops too, I also got confused on this part, so don't worry if you don't understand it the first time. And alright, now the explanation. So the first value, i, represents the index of our table value. If you forgot what an index is, it's this thing right here. This number between these brackets that come after your table value. And the index just tells us on which position our value is located. So for example, if I had the number 5 in, a, in the table value, I would put the index 1 to get the value, the number 5, from our table value. Because number 5 is on the first position in our table. And because it's in the first position, I will put in the number 1. If I put in another value, for example 3. Then to get the number 3 I would have to put in the index 2 because number 3 is on the second position in our table value. And if you had a third value then it would be the index 3 and so on and so forth. So basically the i is the position of our values. You can also name this i whatever you want but for the sake of demonstration purposes, I will leave it as I because you will come across it as I on the internet most of the time. And now the second thing, V, represents the value that we get once we use the index I on our table. So basically this is the same as this. And again, you can name this whatever you want, but for the sake of demonstration, I will keep it as V. And now lastly, in table value. This is pretty self-explanatory. It just tells Roblox Studio which table to use in our loop. Don't know how else to explain it, but it's pretty simple. And also, I forgot to mention that these two values right here are basically like variables. You can name them whatever you want, and if you use them, you will get a specific value. And as I've said, if we use i, we will get the index of our table value, and if you use v, we will get the actual value from our table value. Alright, now let's see some examples, so that we don't get bored. So let's try adding a bunch of different numbers and seeing what we actually get. So basically, let's make a, some kind of calculator, where we can only add up numbers. So instead of our table value, let's add a few more numbers. And now once you have your random numbers, let's also add a variable where we will add up all of our values. And now inside of here, inside of our for loop, let's add up our values. 
So let's type in sum because we want to add these numbers to our sum variable. And now simply just type in plus equals v. And what we are doing is basically adding each number from our table value to our sum variable right here. Let's also add a print so that we know which number we get. And now let's run the game. And we get number 34. And if you try to actually sum up the numbers, we can see that 5 plus 3 is 8, and plus 5 is 13, plus 7 is 20, plus 2 is 22, plus 1 is 23, plus 5 is 28, and plus 6 is 34. So we actually got the right number. Let's see what happens if you type in table value with the index i instead of a v. And let's see what happens. And again, we get 34. And that's because, as I've said before, this is the same as this. All right, now let's try a different example. Let's try changing the property of a bunch of random parts. So let's create some more parts in the workspace, just like this. And let's rename them, because if you don't rename them, our experiment won't actually work. And now let's get our parts and put them inside of our table value, just like this. This might take a while, so bear with me. All right, and now that you have all of your parts, let's go back to our for loop and let's try changing the color of our parts. So first, let's get our part. So let's type in V, which represents the part, because V is the value of our table value. And because the value is an actual part, we, in reality, are basically typing this. And then we're doing that for all the parts in our table value. So now that you have typed in V, let's get the brick color property, just like so. And now to change the property, type in equal. And now let's type in a random brick color, for example, red, red flip flop. And now once you run the game, we will get this ugly color for all of our parts. We can also change the size of our part to something different. Let's change it, for example, to 444. Four, four. And let's see what happens. And as you can see, we get these huge blocks that look very ugly. And if you're confused on how this is working, then let me explain. So, we first get V. And the V, in our case, is actually a part. And thanks to the for loop that we made, we will go through each part in our table value. So V first becomes this part, part 1, and then it changes the brick color to this ugly color and changes its size. Then V becomes part 2, and then it changes color and size again. Then V becomes part 3, and does the same thing again, and then it becomes part 4, and part 5, 6, and lastly part 7. And that's basically it for, for IV loops. They're a bit confusing at the beginner level, but once you understand it through some examples, then you will know how it works. Now, to actually sharpen your skill in using for loops, I challenge you ma to make a for loop by yourself. And once you make that, then I challenge you to actually post that in my Discord server down below and typing the message hashtag challenge8 in hashtag creations. And now, if you actually enjoyed this explanation and understood it, then hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. And also, don't forget to hit that like button. And if I actually forgot to explain something, then don't forget to go in the comments down below and explain what I missed out. And now, See you guys in the next video.